What does that remind you of, huh? you've got here is a three-part system you've got your line and cam cleat or, or as I'm just gonna call it just for short is the clam and then you've got what I call the vertical anchor junction or vag for short and then finally you've got this this is a uh, it's just well it's a it's just a, it's a big it's a it's a big black pole so now for short, I'm gonna call it the uh, BBP. One of the things I will have to do as part of this project is I'm gonna have to reposition this rear handle right here. Um, as you can see, this section right in here where this, these handle uh, inserts are molded uh, and there's a uh, thread uh, that, that's molded into the plastic there. I'm actually going to use that for one of my main attachment points for um, the vag. And so when I uh, remove this, obviously I'll still need handles to be able to lift uh, the, the boat from the rear. So my solution to that, and uh, this is one of the things I love about, you know, going ahead and, and you know, doing your project start to finish as your own DIY you can select all the materials that you want to get. So what I've done instead of the typical kayak handle, uh, these are actually Jeep grab handles made from paracord. Uh, as you can see, they're nice and flexible and really soft and comfortable, but because they're made out of paracord, should be really durable and, and definitely able to handle the weight as, as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition the handles uh, from the rear, and I'm going to position a handle on uh, each side of the rear storage well here and um i think it's gonna look really slick like you know that that uh what they call like a blue camo pattern on there that's gonna be pretty nice so there's gonna be a handle i'm gonna install on this side and then one over here as well on this side and then that will be able to allow me to lift the boat with uh, both hands i'll be able to pick it up and, and move it as opposed to where before you just had to balance the weight of this on just one hand and one thing that's uh, funky about the way that uh, the keel is shaped on this there is not much of a way for you to to balance this as you got the flag in the way there not much of a way to balance this there's no kind of tipping point the front uh the the bow up there is, is really sharply pointed as well so when you get this thing and you're kind of lifting it up on one end it, it wants to rock from side to side but by having grab handles on both sides now i'll be able to to lift it evenly with both hands at one time and so i think that'll keep it a lot more stable when i'm lifting it so i, I think overall the handle situation uh once i get those installed um is going to be better after this project than it was before. Um, you know, I don't know with some of the kits that are out there and the way they handle that, what they would do for the Kilroy, but I, I like the solution better moving the handles up there. Um, because these handles are flexible too, they're not gonna get in the way when I need to load or unload things out of the rear storage well. I should be able to do that without any problem. Here, what I'm doing is I'm making my insert that I'm gonna use to mount the vag. And I've used uh, the rear handle um, from the back of the Kilroy as kind of a template. And I've uh, gone through and just sketched out some, some quick lines here. And then I'm cutting the HDP with the circular saw. And in this case, you can see that is, that's really pro work right there. That's a super straight, um, completely uh, perpendicular uh, cut right there. You know, the good news about this is, like on that little piece right there, that's gonna be rounded off anyway. Here you can see the uh, inset I made uh, to, to basically be able to mount the vag, and you can compare it to the handle right there. And uh, that's a pretty nice fit if you look. That's, that's pretty much right on the money in terms of what I needed. So uh, check the fit on the kayak, and that fits down in there really well. So what I'll do is I'll drill uh, two quarter inch holes uh, here, and um, that'll be where I use to uh, to run my screws through just like you would on the handle to mount to the, uh, the molded in uh, quarter 20 inserts on Jackson kayaks. I've taken a, uh, uh, like a hitch pin type system. Um, and this is all uh, stainless steel marine grade stuff. And I've modified it. Uh, first, I wrapped some wire, uh, some copper wire, which you can uh, see right here. Um, I just used that and just made a tight wrap around the shaft here and uh, then I JB welded that in place and then also put a uh, quarter inch um, inner diameter washer on there as well and um, basically I just used this wire to kind of add a little extra you know 
surface area for the uh, JB Weld to grip onto. And for those of you who don't know, uh, JB Weld, awesome stuff. It is like duct tape for people who know what they're doing. So uh, really um, don't expect that to go anywhere. That is extremely strong stuff. My thought process with using this style instead of a regular like hitch pin and, and cotter pin type system uh, to uh, secure the BBP in place is that with this, I don't have anything else that I have to like hook onto or clip into that potentially I could lose, like a hitch pin or a cotter pin system where I have something that I need to, you know, slide the pole in and then hook on at the end. This one, it's already built into it. As you can see, this thing, when you're sliding it into place uh, through your hole is uh, this way. And then after, after you get it on the other side, uh, and uh, the spring is kind of tensioned up against the side of the BBP. It should lock that thing in place and keep it from slipping out while you're out on the water. To uh, secure the stainless steel tip a little bit better, as you can see, I drilled an eighth of an inch hole through that. And what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, essentially what they call pin it with uh, this machine screw right here. Um, this is stainless steel. And you can see I just used a, uh, a cordless drill to get through that here. Uh, the biggest thing I did was just tape around the end on the stainless steel tip to make sure that it, it stayed stable. As you can see though, that's a nice, nice clean hole, even with like a relatively low power drill. What I'm gonna do is I am going to um, coat this baby with a ton of uh, JB Weld and insert that through um, when, I'm, when I'm ready to, uh, uh, when I'm ready to epoxy my tip down. And um, once I do that, that, tip stainless steel tip shouldn't go anywhere and then what i'm going to do because this is actually longer uh, i'm going to leave a little bit of length um, on uh, one of the ends and um, i'm actually going to and i may have to do it on both ends it just depends on how uh, how precisely i can get it screwed down but uh my plan is to go ahead and um, grind off the end of it uh, flat with my dremel and then i'll be able to make this a completely uh, smooth surface so this pin doesn't stick in out any at all and uh you know, you, you got to have enough clearance when you're, you're trying to get inside the vag. Um, so, you know, this thing should just fit right down inside the vag really smoothly without a lot of friction. That, that's what I'm going for, right? So hopefully this works. And this is following the instructions that came with uh, the fiberglass rod is I made lengthwise um, sections of, uh, of JB Weld. And what you do is kind of put the, uh, the tip on and then give it a little twist. You got to Got to put the tip on and then just, just twist it a little bit. Mm, that's going to get it just right. What that does is allows all the air to, to escape out of the tip uh, so that it bonds in there properly. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the tip set. And then I will run my pin through screw, my pin screw through. And you can see how that looks. You know things are, are working out well because you see all this is like it's oozed out of the tip, man. That's how you know. You did, the, you did the insertion and then the twist just right. I've gone ahead and uh, cleaned up the uh, extra epoxy around the outside and run my machine screw through there. I believe that is a number eight or a number six machine screw. I will find out for sure and let you know. Uh, I used an eighth of an inch drill bit. Uh, actually, the one that came with uh, the Yak Attack um, uh, you know, gear track install uh, kits they used to have back in the day. So... Uh, nice little, nice little uh, drill bit getting through there, uh, eighth of an inch. Uh, it cut through that stainless steel pretty well. So I'm going to use a cutoff wheel on my Dremel uh, after this epoxy setup and get that cleaned up and trimmed down so it's nice and flat with the sides. Um, and, uh, you know, the big thing is with this, is the JB Weld on the fiberglass stainless steel probably would have held just fine. But um running this machine screw through there i'm pretty much 100 percent positive that there's nothing i'm going to put this tip into that i can't pull back out because it's one thing getting your tip in but man you got to have that pull out game too it's going to be interesting this with one hand after i dremeled there uh pretty clean pretty clean so i removed those pins that's just a nice, uh, that's a nice clean tip right there. That should be able to go in real nice. Mm. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, man, you spent a lot of time thinking about the tip, doing a lot of work on the tip. Well, you got to remember to do your work on the base of the shaft too. And uh, that's what we're doing here. We're going to install this T-grip. came with part of the kit on, uh, on the base end. So you, know, you got like the, 
you know, you got like the base of the shaft right there. That's where really all the power comes from. So uh, we got to make sure that uh, we don't uh, don't overlook that too, right? All of it needs to get worked in there. Okay. What I am going to do is I am going to drill again a, a small pin hole right here. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit um, thicker screw this time, I think because I could not find one at the hardware store. So I use the next size up. I'm pretty sure this is the number eight. And so I'm going to drill that out. Uh, as you can see, there's already kind of like a pre-made divot for it to fit into. And so I'm just going to drill that out a little bit deeper, uh, run this pin in. And then same thing before, I'm going to run my epoxy in, in lengthwise strips on either side. And then I'm going to twist into place. All right. So I've made my first cut here on my HDPE and you can tell I, I roughed up the surface a little bit too. I just didn't like all the glare, the sheen that um, this, uh, this particular piece of HDPE has on it. So I did put a little bit rougher finish on there just to, just to help kind of cut down on glare. Now what I'm gonna try to do is kind of contour the sides a little bit and um, try to get it so that it looks a little more, um, you know, kind of in line with the, uh, you know, uh, stern lines of the boat. And then uh, also it's going to help just reduce the weight and uh, hopefully, you know, help reduce uh, you know, any extra instability that will be caused kind of on the edges by having all that excess material there. So I've used masking tape on the HDPE so that I could, I could mark it cleanly. And I found the center line basically for the material. And uh, now I am going to uh, drill my hole that my PVC will fit down into. So I'm going to use a... Uh, a spade bit basically to uh, to drill that out and now I've got like a nice little the way that I've marked this off I've got a nice little crosshair like right there where I know I need to center my hole and so this is going to be basically the base plate for the vag um, as you, you saw earlier I built that insert that insert's going to fit down on this end and uh, then that'll be used to attach um, you know the the base plate onto the vag base plate onto the kayak so as you can see here, we've got a nice clean hole uh, after drilling that out. However, it is just a bit too small and I knew it would be. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just use the little drum sander that I used before with the cordless drill and use that to uh, waller this vag hole out a little bit more. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> All right. So I've taped off the angle on my base plate and uh, now I just have to make an accurate couple of cuts with the circular saw. This is the vag base plate basically that's getting built in and you can see right there is a little bit of... A little bit of the the vag is kind of sticking up itself right there uh just kind of did that as a test fit to make sure that the uh, hole i sanded out was nice and smooth but you can see the contouring and everything there and one thing i do want to note is that um you know one of the reasons i'm using you see down here on the back side i'm doing it too one of the reasons i'm using masking tape uh, for this project is this hdpe is really hard to mark um you know without using some type of like a grease pencil and man those grease pencils like the the grease is real um and so those things just don't want to come off and i just didn't want to have a bunch of messy grease marker pencil still left on this after i got done with the project so i just decided to use a mark uh masking tape and then that way i could just use a pen or marker or whatever i wanted to to, to uh to mark my cut lines and things like that i've got um essentially the uh the vag sleeve built that the uh, BBP fits down into. And uh, one of the things I did do here as well, uh, this is um, one inch uh, inner diameter PVC uh, that I ordered from Formufit. Uh, I've matched that up with uh, one inch um, couplers as well. So um, this is all told about, um, about seven inches um that i've got uh or seven and a half i think technically uh that i've, I've got that that's going to be basically supporting the tube um or the, the bbp as it slides down and uh, one of the things i did have to do with this inner diameter uh, is i did have to to narrow that out anyway i got to use a sanding drum on a cordless drill and just uh, use that on the inside to be able to move some of that material out and um yeah so uh as you'll see, the BBP fits down into the, the vag sleeve uh, pretty nicely. It's a, it's a pretty smooth fit. Okay, so I'm trying to mount my base plate. Uh, I did notice that one of the holes that I, I drilled is going to need to be elongated just a little bit. So I've got a rat tail file here that I'm going to use to uh, to just kind of you know ease those holes uh, open a little bit until they accept the screw. All it took was just a quick little touch with that file and then the quarter 20 screws went right down into the threaded inserts that are molded into the kayak where the rear handle normally is mounted. 
beautifully. So this is what it looks like with the Vag base plate installed. And I am pretty happy with the way this is going to work. And, and look, I mean, this is, that's pretty sturdy. I mean, there's, there's not any give there at all. I mean, the whole kayak shaking when I do that. So it feels very, very solidly connected. Yeah, we're on our way. It's getting close. I've mounted uh, my two Harkin pulleys. And uh, man, I tell you what, um, I'm really liking so far what I'm seeing from this. I think this is going to be a really clean, uh, just a really clean build. Um, on the back side here, you can see as well, I've got a pulley on the underside. And uh, this pulley will be the one that actually, um, you know, will, will be the closest to pulling up the uh, the, the anchor stick. Um, you know, the advantage in theory of using two pulleys is that you can kind of build a gentler angle in. And uh, because you've got two pulleys working, it, you know, may give you a little more mechanical advantage. Um, I will admit that uh, it's been a long time since I've taken a physics class. And... I'm not really sure if this is better or worse than if I just had a single pulley, but I got two of them, so this is what I'm doing. I have, um, you know, run through my pulley system, and just to show you again on the top side what I've got going here, I've run it in through the Harkin and down through the slot. Now, as you can see, initially when I, I did this, I did not uh, drill um, where I needed to go through. It created too sharp of an angle, and then it, it basically created a... Uh, you know, wear point uh, along the plastic for the paracord. Uh, added a little more tension to be able to raise and lower it. Also, I felt like it was going to abrade the paracord too quickly. So, uh, as you can see, and I'll move this out of the way here, um, I've, I've added kind of a relief angle in there um, and, and also uh, drilled it out a little bit more. And so now when I put uh, the pulley on, you can see it moves through there smoothly. It doesn't doesn't grab along that edge. I am going to clean that up just a little bit and get rid of some of those rough edges. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like that's that's going to be a good pulley placement. So I drilled my hole through the end of the BBP that's going to be going down. Obviously, you can see the tip right there. So you know, this is the, the side that's going to be going down. And I'll try to get this in focus here for you. You can see what I did along the edge where I drilled out um, the hole is, number one, I used a... Um, uh, Ugh, I just completely lost the name of the, the damn drill bed. Anyway, it's the one that you use to kind of put a beveled edge on. Um, I'll think of it here in a little bit. Anyway, so I used that to go ahead and drill the tip out. And then the other thing I did, you can see there, I, I put some super glue around the edge um, just to make sure that the glass fibers don't want to pull up and kind of produce a rough edge. And then what I did is I put a little bit of excess in there and I let it drip down inside the uh, walls of the hole that I drilled. So hopefully that super glue will help keep that, that uh, fiberglass uh, from, from wanting to, to split out or, or splinter on the inside of the pole. I have uh, run the uh, hitch pin down through the pole and so that worked perfectly. Now the one thing you'll notice here is when I set this up is that I did want this pole to hang down so that it is slightly just slightly above the, the back of the keel. And the thought process with that was, um, basically this um, will be already in the water. This section here will be below the water line. So when I deploy, it should be a little bit quieter, uh, make a little bit less of a splash than if I had it sitting up above the water line. So you can see also here, um, as I've built this, that I've run the line coming up through. And coming around here, and I decided to go along this sidewall rather than trying to run it up uh, along this top section. Um, mostly because you'll see here the cam cleat is, is fairly bulky and it just wasn't going to fit well up there on the top of the gunnel. So uh, by moving it down uh, here, it is still above the water line. Uh, and you can kind of see right here, you can see where the water line's at. It's just kind of right there on that, that seam uh, on the, the, uh, the gunnel. So um, this should be above the water line, so I shouldn't be taking in any additional water. And like I say, with this, uh, the cam cleat obviously is, is still pretty accessible. You can see where it is relative to the seat right here. Um, you know, I, I still have like pretty easy access to that, so I don't have to reach too far behind me. But uh, you can see I've got the pole hooked in and I've got everything set up at this point. Now, uh, in fairness, I did go ahead and do a couple of tests before um, I uh, started this video. So I've tested this at least once or twice and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it real quick. Uh, but before I do anything and show you how this thing works, I am gonna go ahead and uh, uh, set up, unfortunately, a casualty of this project. Um, this is someone who's making a brave sacrifice to, to prove 
the um, efficacy of, of this mod. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll honor, honor the memory uh, accordingly. And as you can see, it, it's a pizza box. Uh, before we get this started, I just want to recall the memories I have of this pizza box. You know, that time that I picked it up and brought it home and, and ate pizza out of it. Good times. Good times. All right, let's let this thing rip. So here we go. I will focus the cares of my cam cleats. Bam! Look at that. This is brutal. This one inch rod right here. Look at the look at the depth of penetration. It is going all the way in. Mm, look at that. And uh, you can see that that thing is buried, buried in that pizza box. So I feel pretty confident with the, the one inch BBP that I used. This thing is going to plant uh, first time around. Uh, you know, the only thing it might run into, you know, if you run into like rocks or something like that, it might be a problem. But I think that's going to do pretty well. And uh, that thing is buried. Now, as you can see, when I pull it back up. Oh, I'm moving the whole trailer. Hold on. There we go. And it, it does come back up with the with the pulley system. So uh, pretty happy about that. Whoops, look at that. I still have some junk inside that pizza box. So again, now to deploy, uh, you'll see back here. I think I'll show you this. There you go. And this should just slip inside the cleat right there. And there you go. That thing stays up. Now, the one thing I will note about this, you can see, hold on. That's just, that's just gruesome and, you know, gratuitous at that point. Uh, the one thing you will notice with this is that when I, when I move this pole around, I can catch it better from this angle. There is a tiny amount of flex in that HDPE. Um, initial thoughts on it. I think this will be solid enough for, for lake use, but you can see right there, it does kind of flop around. So in heavier waves, I can see this thing eventually starting to bend out that HDPE. Um, to counter that, I think what I may do is kind of run some aluminum, uh, get some, some like one inch aluminum or something like that, and, and run back here to kind of help stabilize and reinforce this, this back area. Uh, I don't notice any flex up here, like this seems to be pretty solid, but this back area back here that's a little bit unsupported, it is tending to flex under the weight of the, the one inch BBP. So I am going to, um, I, I may reinforce the vag a little bit. This BBP is just too much. Too much for it to handle, man. But uh, man, that is that's some good stuff right there. I am super, super pleased with that. Super pleased. I actually did a couple of things uh, to address the amount of, of wobble and play that I saw in the way that the vag base plate fit into uh, the, the rod or the, the handle um, inserts. So what I did, as you can see here, I took some eighth of an inch flat bar aluminum that I just happened to have sitting around the house um, and ran a couple of essentially struts down the length of it. Now, one of the things that that obviously does is help reduce the wobble kind of at the end where it wants to kind of shimmy up and down. But what it also does, and you'll see here in a second, is it prevents the wobble from side to side. Um, and one of the ways that I did that, you remember this piece right here? I spent all that time working on, making sure it fit well. Uh, hey, you know what I don't need? That piece, it turns out. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just mounting it uh, just flat, essentially, right on the, um, right on the, the deck. And uh, with those two bars in place, it really actually helps form a, a better, more stable platform. Okay, so now you can see, I'm going to grab this thing and really flex around on it. And you can see that basically, I mean, it's, it's when I do this now, it's, it's moving the whole kayak. It's not just moving that one piece. So this dramatically increased the uh, rigidity um, for this piece. Uh, and then also, if you notice here on the side too, I'm going to try to lift up on it and basically I mean, this thing completely flattens it out so uh, by adding those two aluminum bars it solved both both the uh, the torsion that wanted to occur from side to side and then the up and down flex as well uh, so that is much stiffer now and much better able to support the weight 
of all that BBP. That's a that's a tough badge right there. So one of the additions that I did make after fishing with this uh, the first time and, and using this in the video where I went out and caught those bluegill. Oh, hey, I say hi to my dogs. Uh, anyway, after uh, doing that, I did realize that one of the things I don't like is if uh, I'm out past a point where uh, I, I can't drop the anchor, um, what happens is this T-handle just slams down against uh, the vag and uh, makes a pretty loud bang. So what I've done is I've, I've wrapped this, this uh, BBP up, um, kind of put this little kind of put this little protective cap on there you can see right there I made it out of made it out of pool noodle and what that does is like when this slams down it, it you know protects the shaft and the base up here from from taking any damage it also uh, you know adds a little more cushion so when it starts pushing up against the vag like it's it's not as noisy it doesn't make a big uh, loud noise because that that loud noise it's fun but it also scares the fish one other correction I realized, you know, after I started using this and got this out on the water um, and was, was then driving it home late at night, you know, one of the things I realized, I never reattached my uh, Jackson long load flag that you're required to have for hauling uh, extra length uh, items at night. So uh, I attached this here pad eye with just a couple of those eyes. And then look at there, man. Got your little, got your little carabiner. And then, uh, look, man. Hey, there we go. Now I'm all like legal and shit again. Cool, huh? So the final, final little, um, you know, adjustment I made on this setup. Uh, you can see this is the spot where I originally had the uh, clam, and I have now moved the clam up uh, a few inches. Uh, I'll show you where that is relative to my seat, and uh, you can see the basically I, I moved it. Uh, pretty far forward about like where my hips would be uh, when I'm sitting down in the seat. Um, honestly, what I found was is when I had it further back when I was, um, you know, pulling the rope and moving it forward to uh, bring the anchor up and, um, you know, uh, get get repositioned, uh, I found that it was causing a little bit of shoulder impingement because I was kind of having to reach back behind me a little bit further to, to get the rope. And so uh, I found that it was just easier to go ahead and uh, move this up a little bit. And, and I think this will make it a little bit easier to, uh, to pull uh, forward and, and get into position. Uh, and I think it'll put less strain on my shoulder that way. Um, impingement is just a fancy way of saying it, it don't feel right. But it really didn't feel right. So I actually think moving it up here a little bit closer in the seat is going to be fine. I also made sure and pay attention. Uh, and, and my paddle stroke basically kind of ends like right about there. So I don't anticipate that this positioning will, will get in the way of my paddle stroke at all. And that's really what I was hoping to accomplish by moving it farther back. Okay, so very last update on this, I promise. Uh, one thing I did notice the last time I was packing my stuff up. As you can see right here, um, this little abrasion right here, that was being caused by the line uh, rubbing um, from the, uh, the, the, uh, the line uh, that ran back to the anchor, like rubbing up against uh, my hatch cover here. So to fix that, as you can see, before I just had this riveted down, and as you can see now, I've added a half inch uh, HDP block to kind of sit above it. And as you will note, now when this moves, it moves completely above the hatch cover. And so now this the line sits up above the hatch cover, so I shouldn't be getting that type of abrasion. I just didn't like the amount of wear that was putting on uh, the hatch cover. And then also, um, I felt like it was probably causing a little bit more friction uh, in terms of the operation of the anchor going both up and, you know, especially up, uh, but then maybe some going down as well. So uh, last little fix I think I've got for this, and this project is finally, weeks later, in the books. You know, it occurred to me that while I did this video, I never actually explained why I decided to do this project. Um, you know, th there are kits available online. If you want to go ahead and just get a kit, um, you know, it, it may be better than my design, frankly. I wanted to do this because I wanted to try to DIY something. Um, I wanted to be able to pick the components I used, um, you know, so things like the, the Harkin pulleys. I don't know what the kits you can get online uh, come with, and so I really don't know, you know, uh, you know how how you know how much of a factor any of that plays, right? Like the pulleys that come with that kit, you know, may not be name brand pulleys, but they may work just as well or better. Who knows? 
you know, other designs may be better than mine. Um, but I really wanted to do this, number one, because I thought it'd be a fun DIY project. Um, but then, you know, it, it would allow people maybe to get creative with it, too, by seeing my DIY stuff. Um, but, you know, the, functionally, from a fishing standpoint, the reason why I decided to do this, you know, while the stick anchor has its limitations, obviously, because of the, uh, you know, depth that you're limited to in using it, you know, I, I have a um, Yak Attack uh, park and pole. And I have just found that I hate that thing. It, it's hard to use uh, because of the way that it, it kind of wants to float. Uh, at times, it really doesn't, you know, because it's not a solid fiberglass pole like the BBP is. Um, you really have to, you know, kind of play with it to get it in place sometimes. And, you know, because it, it kind of wants to float up on you and bob around a little bit. Um, it's also slow. Uh, and you know, really, what I found for my style of fishing, what I like to do is go out and I like to work banks, you know. Uh, and so I wanted something that I could, you know, deploy quickly, move down a bank, you know, particularly uh, let the wind drift me into place, and then you know, drop again and uh, keep myself in, in that position until I'm ready to pack up and move. And and with that the park and pole, where it's obviously a very manual process to pull it in and out, it's slow. It's really going to slow you down quite a bit. So I, I really, uh, you know, I'm optimistic that the way that this is designed is, is going to be better, um, you know, for, you know, working a bank, working efficiently, moving quickly, allowing the wind to kind of drift into place and then, then setting up shop and getting back out of there again and, and back down the bank. So, um, oh my gosh, these gnats are really pissing me off. Ugh. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's uh, that's why I decided to do this. Uh, you know, if you see anything in my design that you think you want to tweak or uh, that you feel like you could do better, or if you have any experience with some of the other kits out there and will tell me what I did wrong, man, feel free to go ahead. <laughs> you know, this is my first stab at this. And, uh, you know, for a prototype, I'm happy with the way that it works so far. Uh, I think you'll be able to see it in action here before too much longer. I'll, I'll probably go out and, and uh, test it this weekend. So, uh, you know, hopefully I'll have some footage you can see in the the future where you see me actually using it but uh excited for this project and excited to give it a shot and uh, let me know what you think